Hello and welcome to this video on using the 2D hex sprite hexagonal tile setup. Now when you download this package into Unity 2018.2, I'm um, using 0.f2 uh, just to make sure that you're using the right version before trying to download this. Otherwise it won't work. It uses the new tile map setup so you'll have to use Unity 2018.2 something uh, in order to use this. So once you import, you'll see that you get uh, all these assets to import. I'm just going to import them now. And it's going to take a little second to process everything. Okay, so then you want to go to your scenes folder here and just open the sample scene. Should should be it maybe ah it's not actually in that folder. Don't know why. Oh, that's there. That's came with right. So it's actually inside this folder. Scenes sample scene. It's pretty weird why that folder's there because um, it's not actually part of this pack. But anyway, this is the scene that you'll see. And if you want to edit the sprites, then you will have to go into this. Uh, the sheet. So I've created a blank one, right, in case you want to use that. Um, you can see that these are actually referring to, if I go to the top of this, extra props, right, that's some extra props in there. Uh, you've got your base tiles. Let's see, let's try to figure out what map I'm using. So we've got the grid, base tiles, I'll just toggle that. Okay, that's those, and then there's like shadow bits. So if I choose sprites default, that's that one. Okay, that's the sprite. So tile map. Weird why there's not any reference to it, but I know that it's actually the uh, sprite sets. And it's either this one or this one. You can see actually like this one's flat. So it's a blank one. And then I've created this 1A, which is like gradients. Uh, now what you want to do is edit this one so I would ideally duplicate the original so I'll, I'll make a duplicate of that right and that's now made like a backup so I'll just call this backup just in case I want to sort of edit this later now this is the one that's been used in the scene here so I want to edit this so if I yeah, just double click this right and then open open with Photoshop or using GIMP, you can use GIMP or even Paint. Right, so I'm gonna use Photoshop to make some edits to this. <coughs> Excuse me. Alright. So what you wanna do is First, kind of like select one you want to change. Now let's uh, change one of these brown ones. It's hard to know what ones I'm actually using in the map. But for example, let's just change all these, this row, right? Uh, so I'm just going to copy that and then paste it. And it's just so that I'm organized. I know what one I'm changing. I can toggle this if I don't like what I've done, right? Then I'm going to lock the, lock the pixels so that when a brush, it only brushes on where there's existing pixels, right? So I'm gonna get some kind of brush. So I'll just hide that so now I know what I'm working on, right? I'm just gonna like darken up some bits. Let's do like a soft brush. And um, let's see, I'll get some effect. If I wanna grunge them up a bit. This brush looks really funny. <laughs> um, let's try a different brush. It's distracting. All right. Just for example, if you wanted to do that, right, add some like little details to it. Right, and maybe you want to add like a kind of crack or something across one. Really hard to see. Let's 
the menu. Okay, so the way I do cracks is like I get a kind of darker tone of the existing or use black with some opacity and then white just round the edge or a kind of lighter colour of itself and just like kind of touch up some of the edges just a little bit. doesn't have to be the full um, thing. You're just suggesting that there's a little highlight at the edge. You can do that for any little bits. Even the highlights kind of work as cracks and stuff like that. Right, so I've done a few changes, right? I'm just going to re-enable that and then I'll just combine the layers down just so that it saves over properly because the way Photoshop works is if there's layers it will automatically try and save as a PSD but if I merge these down and then save it will save over the existing one so in theory when I go back to Unity it's going to update you see that's now updating and there you go I've added detail and that looks pretty nice to these so I might want to go back and do something with the sand so I'm just going to undo so if I undo I get that layer back right so because that was the last step I did and then I'm going to do something with these like sandy tiles so let's take these so this layer copy and then I usually do control shift paste just to make sure it pastes in the same location sometimes when you paste with just control V it moves it you see that it's just put it in the center so control shift V is what you want to paste uh, exactly where you picked it from right so let's do similar thing with the sand I'll just hide that I'll lock the pixels so that I only draw on existing ones I'm going to pick this yellow I'm going to choose a brush that's a little bit more I don't know granular I guess like I don't know maybe anything will do like, this looks good right I've got these brushes from various places so just go on to like Gumroad or Artstation or uh, DeviantArt they do loads of cool brushes and uh, there's a guy called Seth Sethroff Art I think it is uh, on YouTube. He does really nice brush sets as well. You just watch some of his videos, and then he'll link you to various other sites. Right? It's not a little longer looking like sand, but this is just to make it look kind of cool, right? Kind of grainy, grainy, grainy. Uh, one thing I like to do so is I'll make a copy of this if I want a grainy effect. Um, so I made a copy of the layer, right? And I'm just going to go to Filter Gallery and use Spatter, right? And you see it will kind of like kind of spray some of that around. The only problem is it gives you a little bit of a black edge where there's no pixels there, so I'm just going to be careful with it. That's something like that. I quite like the black edge actually. So that's now giving me a more kind of sandy effect. I'm just going to bring that in just a little bit. So like 60% this over the original one because I made a copy. Merge that down. Right, I'm going to re-enable everything else. I'm going to merge visible, I guess, and then save. Now when I go back, I've updated that original file. And there we go. I've got some texture in the sand. Let me just hide the grid and stuff. Grid, icons. Okay. Right, so you see I've made some like little objects and stuff to go in your scene just to get you started. Um, I'll probably make more in the future but you can see it's easy just to work off what you've got. So you can make some rocks with these similar tones like for example if you wanted to make a nice rock to go with this so I'm going to pick a colour right I'll just do a new layer. Use a nice big solid brush and use the pencil. Uh, I don't know what the alternative is in GIMP, but basically you don't want it to be a soft brush, you want like a pen or a pencil so that it's solid. And uh, so I'm just going to pick some tones here, little light tones for highlights and bring bits out. I say that Sethroff art guy, he's really good for um, picking up some style tips. Let's just say something like that, right? Uh, and what I like to do is use the the cutout filter, so filter gallery. Oops, that was the last one. Filter gallery, and then cut out. I don't know if it works right away, but let me just check. Increase the levels, and then edge fidelity simplicity. You can see that if I change these, it kind of just 
jags up the edges a bit. That's quite nice for rock and then you can, uh, in fact what I always want to do is put it in a black background because I want the background to also have an effect like on the edge because there was no pixels there so I wasn't doing the same to the edge so I'm going to merge that down and you'll see a little trick I'm going to do shortly so filter gallery, that's the last thing I did I'm just going to levels adjust this so I get more tone range and then just bring that saturation back I probably lost the right colours but anyway there we go, I've kept that tone now <coughs> and then this is a little bit more jagged and if I change, <coughs> sorry, if I change this to screen not screen, sorry, if I if I just select the black actually and just delete it, right let's give me that and you know in theory that would be like a little rock that would go this I'm just going to colour match it a bit better right, so that would kind of live on those tiles in theory um, I'm going to make it big again and instead of using what I did there, can you see it's got this black edge I'm just going to use this tool here I'm just going to like cut a few bits out so I'm just selecting the inside bits but you see I'm doing these little jags little kind of angli angular changes Mimicking what's there, but also improvising a bit more on it. And then Control Shift I will change the selection to the other, so the outside, the outside area, and delete that. And then I guess it looks a little bit uh, that it needs a cleanup, so I can use Filter Stylize Oil Paint, and that will clean things up a bit. Cleanliness, all right. Um, what else can I use to clean this up? It'd be good to sort of crispy up the edges, so I could use like sharpen. Let's do a basic sharpen. Click that a few times. Um, I can go ahead and choose a nice soft brush and just I just want to enhance the edges a bit with that darker tone. So I'll just. It's really hard to see because I've got my brush set quite low quite close to that colour so I'll just bring that down a bit. Uh, just a few little highlights here and there, cracks and stuff. Right, uh, I want to lock the pixels so that I stay, you see I've just gone, gone out there so I lock the pixels and that way if I just scrub over this edge it's only going to affect the actual uh, pixels that are there. Few angular bits, a few cracks here. Uh, again, get a little highlight tone on the edge here. <clears throat> I was only want to show you guys how to update the tiles, but uh, I've gone ahead and made a full-on painting tutorial now. Sorry about that, but hopefully that's going to help you get inspired a bit. Um, and sorry for my thick Scottish accent; it's very hard for some people to grasp. Um, you can okay maybe too much detail for the size is going to be but I'll keep it at that size right so I'm just gonna it's gonna take that right um, I want to do a little gradient to it so I'm gonna add a new let's just get rid of that I'll just add a new layer because I've selected this right and if I just jiggle this around the selection's now gone to the actual rock, cool little tip. And if I do like a gradient, it creates a new layer, but it also <coughs> makes a mask based on the selection. So I can do a nice gradient, um, like to make the base darker. So I'll just bring that down to a kind of dark brown. And that fades to white. Um, that's what I want. And then I can change the angles up right so I can change the opacity of that just I just want it a little bit like that and then I'm just going to merge that down I'm going to save this as its own object so uh, I'll select it just jiggle it around a wee bit right and then copy new document okay and it's 
basically setting it to the right size and I can save that as like I'll just save it to desktop for now, I'll call it big rock. I'll call it bog rock. Um save it as big rock. Big rock. Right, so that aside, uh, I want to save any changes I've made here. I don't think I've made any more, but you can see you can lock the pixels, draw and stuff. <coughs> Get a hell of a groggy throat this morning, sorry. And uh, like just some, just some like effects and stuff, right? Uh, that's cool and then save that we'll save over the existing i've already done a backup so i can always bring that back in uh, so back in here because i've saved it it's updated these now i want to bring in my uh, extra little rock so you can see initially i made this sprite sheet extra props if i add to this and regenerate the sprite sheet it's going to change the order that it rips these sprites out and it's going to mess everything up. So ideally I want to start uh, either a new sheet or just bring in the actual single object. So I'm going to import uh, just the object, so import new asset, and I think I called it Big Rock. Big Rock, right. So there it is. I'm going to, okay, so it's already come in as a sprite. Uh, I've got my sprites layer here, so if I toggle that, you can see there's all my sprites. And I think it's just a case of dragging it in. And there it is, right? Okay, sprites. That's weird why the shadows are maybe it goes above. No, 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 it doesn't go above there. So, because I've got this shadows, right? But I think it's did something to do with the Z. The shadows are minus 0.1, which brings them to the front. Sprites are minus 2. But funnily enough, my big rock is fighting that, so I just need to make that 0. Okay, it's in front of the shadows now. And then I can bring this big rock in. So zoom in. Scene. Extensive video, guys. Extra information. Big rock. Okay, so. Just gonna alt drag. Is it alt drag? No. I'm thinking of something else. If you do control D, that'll duplicate. And then you just wanna scale again. So I can scale this like that way and make it smaller and make like a kind of bunch of rocks. And then control D again. And scale it like that. See, it starts to lose its kind of believability as it gets too, too flattened. So you can make up a few of these. But there you go, there's some some rocks uh, added to the scene quite easily. And you see by the time you scale these down, they look quite, quite nice. And uh, if I go to the game view, you can see everything's quite nice looking there. So that's that for this video. That's how you update the existing tiles. Uh, you make a copy of the original, right? So I made a copy of this one and called it backup, right? And then I'm editing the original one. So I'm just basically uh, clicking on this, right? So I double clicked, or is it this one? Right, I double clicked the top one and then edit. It might open already in Photoshop or whatever your default is for opening these kind of files. Um, and then just make your edits and changes, save it over. And when you come back into uh, Unity, it will update. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you liked watching this and any requests for props, uh, feel free to uh, leave a comment or get in touch. Uh, I'll update this actually. I'm gonna push this up as a little update and uh, Hopefully you guys can understand how this works. So thanks for watching. Bye.